This is Commander Danny Vega, video log 002. Current date is February 7, 3305. I'm currently at the Waypoint 4 base camp, which is located in the system of Clue Coo, Echo Whiskey Yankee, Charlie 3 1907, close to the Lilland Tegan Nebula. The base camp is at Geosite number 16, nicknamed Shepherd Shallows, on System Body 5 Golf Alpha. It has an amazing view of the nebula and a collection of active geysers that look like they are expelling orange juice from deep below. But how did I get here, you ask? If you're watching this from the comfort of the bubble, my current location is 13,126 light years from Seoul, and if you are watching this all the way in Colonia, I am 8,900 light years away from Jack Station. Though it has been a month, I'm pretty sure the generation ships would take hundreds if not thousands of years to get to this point in the galaxy. So you'll probably have to thank the Sirius Corporation for their distribution of the Frameshift Drive to all the ships on this expedition, as we are cutting several years of travel to just a few weeks. But I would like to show you how my journey started, and what it took to get to where I am now. So I'll take you back to the Polanyi system, designated by the Distant Worlds 2 organizers as Waypoint 1. I made my way to the planet side base camp about 3 kilometers outside the surface installation Brooks Point. Upon my arrival I spotted a lone anaconda emblazoned with the Fuel Rats logo belonging to a commander Perky Percy. I tried hailing him but he wouldn't answer, turns out he was finishing a broadcast since he was a DJ for the newly formed distant radio. When launch day came around, I actually overslept and had to rush to the tourist beacon that marked the launch of the first Distant Worlds expedition. There were a few latecomers as well, but I had no time to stick around and chat and probably jump to the next system. I was unaware that there had been an itinerary posted on a forum established by the organizers and I had passed by two points of interest, or POIs, during my first set of jumps. Relative to my location at the time, I was near the third POI, nicknamed Cycladia. It was an Earth-like world, or ELW for short. Unlike the birthplace of humanity, this planet had a ring system around it, possibly a moon that was ripped apart by the gravitational forces of the planet. Its orbit may have been quick, since it's rumored the rings of the planet cycle faster than others, hence its name. But I didn't stick around for too long to observe the speed. The next POI was one that I had heard of but never had a chance to visit on my own before. Nicknamed Labyrintho, the planet was a peculiar sight to behold and depending where you drop from orbital cruise, you'd either find tall rocky spires or canyons upon canyons kilometers deep. I had heard of such a place from a pair of commanders who set out on an expedition to visit very strange worlds throughout the Milky Way. I was only here for a short while, but I was able to find me a canyon that had an even deeper canyon within it. My rush to Waypoint 2 was somewhat illogical, but I purposefully avoided the Lagoon Nebula and Thor's Eye POIs because I had been to them many times before on earlier expeditions. My first time in the Lagoon Nebula was actually the time I met my mentor, Commander Ryza Merch but that will be another story for another time. I wanted to get to the next waypoint in order to sell my data of a few relatively undiscovered systems I had found on the first leg of the trip. I took a break once I made it to Omega Mining Operation, which was a huge asteroid base in the ring system of one of the Jovians. Last time I was here, I took a detour straight to Colonia with my cutter and the skeleton crew in tow. I didn't partake in the community goal to mine materials for a planned station at the heart of the galaxy, so I used my free time to assemble my last video log and organize the clips for this current video log. The days just seemed to pass since rooms in this base had no windows, which messed up my circadian rhythm. I eventually did make my way to the designated base camp, but through an invitation by other commanders I was drawn to a nearby geosite that had geysers like the ones at Waypoint 4. If I could name this site, it would be Roald's Trampoline, due to a single geyser that was up a steep hill 
that could send SRVs up by at least 8 kilometers from the valley floor. And the extra time was spent meeting with other commanders and exploring a bit of the nebula for some notable stellar phenomena. Sadly though, I could only find a couple bio sites. Staying around in the place for too long gave me what I call the itch. Basically an incessant drive to continue jumping from system to system and could possibly be a precursor to the very real concern of space madness. I only hope that with the higher chance of finding a commander or two will bow any paranoia or loneliness out in the black. So after a week or two in the Omega Nebula, the Distant World's Sioux Fleet was on their way again to Waypoint 3. With the POI itinerary for the next leg on hand, I made my way to the first POI named the Arc Caminon Mountain Range, a collection of mountains that rivaled the ones found on Earth. I wasn't alone on my visit and met a commander with a flaming red, orange, and yellow crate phantom. He was quite surprised that I mentioned I was filming him, but he didn't seem to mind. We had a bit of fun in our SFEs, but we stopped after he sent his scare flying straight into his park ship. At least he had shields. We parted ways, him heading straight for the Eagle Nebula and myself heading to the next POI. POI number 2 was a quick visit to NGC 6629, a blue nebula that was first discovered by William Herschel. The drop out of hyperspace placed me a good distance away from the brilliant Wolf Riot Star. Even though it was already discovered and mapped, I used my FSS or full spectrum scanner to locate the single class 3 Jovian 11,000 light seconds away. From here, I could very well go on to the next POI. But having been to the Eagle Nebula before, using the Colonia Connection Highway on past voyages to the core regions, I took a little detour to a stellar POI included in the Galactic Mapping Project. This stellar POI, nicknamed Mama's Boy, includes a brilliant white dwarf star with a close orbiting metal rich companion. The scorched metal ball whose surface temperature was around 4000 Kelvin carelessly flew into the polar jets of the white dwarf, like a boy running through the flowing skirts of his mother. I just had to watch from afar since it is quite easy to fall into the massive unseen gravity wells of these stellar bodies. In my search for biological entities on my journey, heat played a factor. One source was of course the main star in the system, another source was the existence of volcanic activity. Using this criteria, I was able to find my first biosite filled with these so-called anemones. The actual site contained white gourd-shaped objects that had a bioluminescent quality when seen upon their shadowed side as the B-class star in the system was most likely bleaching the sun subside white with its radiation. I finished my detour by heading straight to Rohini, docking at the Eudaemon Anchorage starport. After filling up on provisions, it was a straight shot to Waypoint 3, located in the Conflux region of the Milky Way. But before I headed to the abandoned sites, I found in my navigation panel an entry of notable stellar phenomena. Traveling a great distance to the site, found in the ring system of a gas giant, I found my first instance of these mysterious objects floating in space. I can only call these objects giant crystals as they have a similar shape to massive terrestrial crystals found in deep caverns. Traveling back to the entry point of the system, I made my way to the designated base camp located at Site Delta. I had been to the abandoned sites before, but never have I seen so much activity. Not only were there large and medium ships parked around the derelict buildings and SRVs driving around, 
There were a good number of other ships, possibly long distance rare goods traders, using the Colonial Connection Highway, taking a chance to see the Distant Worlds 2 fleet. Though there was some talk of these ships becoming hostile, so for some people, it wasn't as safe as you'd think. It is a dangerous galaxy after all. On the last leg, from waypoint 3 to waypoint 4, I didn't really do much sightseeing. I was very focused on releasing the previous video log, so I just made the straight route to the Lilland Tiger Nebula, stopping over at the Sakakawea Starport for a much needed rest. However, upon my exit from the surface base, I was greeted with a planetary flare as the light from the host star shone in the thick atmosphere of the Jovian, flanked by its massive ring system. Such a sight is fleeting, so I made a recording of it, not knowing when it would be possible to catch it again. By the release of this video log, the Distant Worlds 2 fleet is well on their way to Waypoint 5, located at Polo Harbor Planetary Outpost. In the system of Bowens Kilo Sierra Dash Sierra Charlie Two Zero Dash Niner Five Niner. Just hearing the name and knowing we are a stone's throw away from Colonia, I am reminded of my beginnings here as a Pilots Federation commander. Maybe I'll tell that story in my next video log. But my time has gone too long for this one. So until next time, so long.